Only a week or two ago, it was going to be war, war, war. The election was going to be fought on national security grounds. And now it's jobs, jobs, jobs. So we've got the budget coming up in a couple of weeks. This is going to be absolutely critical. It will be an election budget. There will be a cash splash and the government is going to electioneer on the premise, the old premise, that these guys are superior economic managers to the Labor Party. <laughs> That's not really a joke. I disagree. I find it hilarious. So the jobless figures came out this week, and they were good figures. Unemployment down, participation rate up, underemployment, which is a big one, down, because, of course, these jobs figures, they count you as employed if you work one hour a week. So the figures look good, but it's all a matter of perspective. It's a matter of cherry-picking the data, because, you see, we've had a pandemic, and the rebound from the pandemic makes the figures look great. Also, the fact that there has been no migration. Now, these Various factors are key to what's going to happen with the timing of the election too, because it's the latest date they can run is May 21. But of course, the jobless figures come out a little bit before May 21 for April. So that means they may decide to go earlier because, of course, all the backpackers, all the students flowing back into Australia, presuming that happens, will affect the jobless figures. Now, the other key thing that we've seen in the Murdoch press today, and these guys are the messengers, they're the communications department for the government, is that we've seen they're going to campaign on debt as well. They're going to say, look, we're getting the debt down faster than expected. They've already written it. What a magnificent effort it is. The reality is, and get this one, the coalition, even before the pandemic, had amassed more debt in its time in government, its six years in government, than every previous government since Federation combined. They've got a trillion dollar debt, or thereabouts, getting that way. They're getting it down for sure. Because, of course, the bonds that are bought $300 billion worth by the RBA, by the Reserve Bank of Australia, just vanish as if they never existed. So it's going to be easy to make those figures look good. Now, we roughly know what's going to happen because, of course, every day there's a budget leaked to their media allies and they're talking about relief. So there's going to be a whole lot of cash payments. One was announced just a few hours ago. There's going to be other measures. One, it's a word you'll be hearing, it's a horrible acronym called LAMITO, which is the Low and Middle Income Tax Offset. This was $1,080 annually in tax relief for low and middle income earners. Now, they've got a bit of a problem here because this ends in June and they can't afford it to end because when it ends, people are going to be $20 a week worse off. Now, if you add that, anybody who's been shopping lately or filled up the car with petrol knows the prices are going through the roof. So that will mean that consumers are going to be giving back $20 unless they extend Lamito, the tax relief, they're giving $20 back to the government in tax. They'll be giving $20 to Woolies and Coles wherever they shop in rising grocery prices. And they'll be giving $20 to BP and Shell in rising petrol prices. So cost of living pressure is the big one. So Josh Frydenberg on budget night will sally forth with all this relief for us ordinary Australians saying, here's the government largesse. We are addressing cost of living measures. So we're going to see plenty of spin heading into this election, plenty of spin out of the budget. And here at Michael West Media, we're going to try to bring you the true picture of what is actually going on, put it in historical context, give you perspective to cut through the spin so you know what's really going on. Of course, the swing factor here also is the distractions. And we've seen a magnificent distraction over the past few days, the sad and untimely death of Senator Kimberly Kitching at the age of 52 is being exploited for political gain via the Murdoch press in the Mean Girls coverage. Three solid days now on the front pages of the grossest hypocrisy. Here's a news organisation which has persecuted so many women. It's gone after Julia Gillard, Christine Holgate, Gillian Triggs, Yasmin Abdel-Megid, Grace Tame, Brittany Higgins, 
even before her funeral on Monday, the politicisation of, of this woman's death is an absolute disgrace. Yet the rest of the media is following the story. They're playing along with this enormous distraction. So we're going to see a deluge of public relations spin. And we're going to pick it apart for you. So thank you to everybody that supports us on, on Patreon because the cost of living is on the rise and your support is much appreciated. 